Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So today we're going to be taking a look at an early access build of Ion Maiden. Ion Maiden is being developed by 3D Realms, the same company that developed Duke Nukem 3D and Shadow Warrior, and it's also using the same build engine that powered those games back in the mid-90s. That's what makes Ion Maiden different from the other throwback games that we're starting to see lately, such as Dusk, that's another good game that we might take a look at here shortly. But it's using the older game engine, so it has the authentic feel from a mid-90s game. Right away, one of the things that you'll notice with Ion Maiden are the graphics. Now, they went ahead and pushed the build engine to the max with higher detailed textures and texture work. Things that they just couldn't afford to do back in the 90s. And the game looks great for being a more pixelated, retro-looking game. Blood splatters when you shoot enemies. There's lots of gore. This has definitely got that old school. We don't really care about the ESRB. We're just going to make a game that looks cool. It's fun to play. And the graphics definitely help solidify that. Now the build engine compared to something like the Doom engine was definitely more flexible. You have more verticality. They're able to use lifts a lot more. There's large scale destruction available in the build engine. And this really adds to the fact that the game may be running on an older engine, but it doesn't really feel out of place here in 2018. The gameplay is the next most important thing, and they really nailed it on this game. The gameplay, for the most part, is very simplistic. You start off, you run around, and you shoot things. Now, this is a very simple gameplay mechanic style. Pretty much, you open doors, you hit switches, you shoot enemies, uh, you pick up items, you reload your weapon, and that's pretty much it. At least at this particular point. We don't have things like jetpacks or anything like that yet. That was something that they had in Duke Nukem. I'm assuming there might be uh, some sort of inventory system here in the near future. But there's just really nothing in the preview build at this point. But that's okay. The simple mechanics with good level design, good enemy types, which that's something we'll go over here in a second, and the overall feel to the game really works here because it's just fun there's nothing complicated about it you don't have to do any wall jumping you don't have any weird puzzles where you need specific items in a specific order to make things work you just go kill guys get keys open doors kill more guys and you're free to do it any way that you want to now speaking of the enemies there aren't a lot of different variety in the game at this point this is still early access but there's like an infantry trooper, there's a shotgun trooper who has a little bit more health. There is a almost like an elite trooper guy uh, who has even more health. There's these little spider looking guys that run around and jump at you. They're kind of annoying, but almost every game of this type has one of these little monsters that just rush you in swarms. That just seems to be something that has to be in a retro game because they were in all of them. They're very annoying, but at the very least in this game, they're used in proper situations where there's not much else going on and you can handle them, or they throw them at you in a large open environment so you can run away and deal with them when you feel like. And then finally, in the preview build, you do fight a boss. And I'm not going to lie, this guy's actually pretty tough. You can't just circle strafe around him. You have to use some tactics and use specific weapons. With the destructible environment, you can't just stand behind cover. Uh, because he will blow it up and then come over and kill you. So, considering that this is built on an older game engine, and obviously they're going for that old school feel, there's not any crazy mechanics for you to take advantage of, you don't have any sort of energy shield or anything like that, you just have to outplay the enemy. And that's basically what makes this game fun, is that you actually have to outplay and outsmart the computer AI and that's really where the joy in older games came from now you may not be doing any crazy wall jumping or anything like that but you do have a pretty interesting arsenal the basic pistol in this game looks like it holds like 24 rounds but you get six shots out of it I think it fires multiple shots at once and it's actually pretty strong you can take out most of the basic enemies with it fairly easily and throughout the early access campaign it is useful throughout the majority of it this is in stark contrast to the pistol in doom which you pretty much never used again once you grabbed a shotgun now ion maiden does have its own version of a shotgun it actually looks almost like a grenade launcher in most other games 
It just kind of loads with like a six or a 12 pack uh, drum round. You just run around and shoot the hell out of things with it. It's a lot of fun. The rate of fire is a little bit slower than shotguns and many other games, which means that you can't just run and gun with it. Like you have to be a little bit more strategic because you know you're gonna only get one shot. So with the shotgun, you pretty much wanna make sure that you're killing the enemy. So you have to make sure your shots are accurate. Next up, you get a submachine gun, which pretty much does what you think it would. It's a high rate of fire, lower damage machine pistol. And this is good for taking on mobs of enemies or if there's a lot of enemies far away. It's actually pretty good for that, at least in the uh, preview campaign that we're playing here. But overall, this is probably the most generic of all the weapons. This didn't feel any different than any other game to me. And then finally, the last weapon that you really get to play with here in the preview campaign is the bowling bomb. Now, this thing is really cool. It's basically a grenade that you can cook. Uh, the more you cook it, the further you throw it. And it takes a little while to get accurate with this thing. But once you do, it's a lot of fun. But even if you're not that accurate, what's great is it will track enemies. So if there's enemies hiding behind a wall or something, and you're like, okay, I can run out there, they're gonna get one shot on me, and maybe you only have five health points left. In most old school games, you were screwed. You either had to get super lucky and they not hit you and you get them first, or you had to go backtrack and get some health before you can move forward. In this game, you just roll a bowling bomb in there, it will track the enemy hiding behind the wall and blow the shit out of them. This is certainly the most unique weapon I've seen in a long time, and it's a lot of fun to play with. Now I saved what to me is the best aspect of this game for last, and that is the music. Ion Maiden has an old school 90s cyberpunk soundtrack to it, and it sounds great. It To me, it sounds like it's straight out of like an Unreal game, uh, or like a Deus Ex type of game. Just right in that era where video game music had its own distinct sound. And here, I'm just gonna play a little bit for you here and you can listen to it for yourself. Now, if you're a younger gamer, that sound probably doesn't sound too familiar to you, but anybody who did play the 90s shooters Way back when, that sound, I can't define it any more than that. Uh, it's just the notes and the tones that they're using are very reminiscent of games of the era. And it brings back a lot of memories for me. Like, the music alone just screams nostalgia every time I put my headphones on and play the game. Honestly, I wish we went back to this sound style or this sound stage. Uh, I'm not an audio guy, so I do apologize. I'm not able to describe this properly. But I'm sure some of you guys can tell me in the comment section below what it is that I'm trying to describe here. But I really wish more games today used this type of audio. Or at the very least, focus this heavily. They did a really good job here. And it really brings the right atmosphere to the game. Alrighty guys, so Ion Maiden has graphics that work. It has a game engine that's very functional even here in 2018. We have enemies that fit the game very well. You have basic, then you have elites, and they just progressively get tougher. The boss was extremely challenging at first until you kind of figure out the formula, which is great. Most games, their boss fights are a joke. In Ion Maiden, it took me about three times to kind of figure out exactly how to take him down. And I was really glad to see that, that I had to work for it. The weapons look, feel, and sound great, and are very unique. The bowling bomb is something that you can't really do in any other game. And like I said, it's a hell of a lot of fun just running around with these things. There's even a mode now where that's all you have. That's the only weapon you get and you're supposed to just complete the preview campaign with those. And it's a lot of fun. I did leave out one point and that's the quips and the one-liners that are thrown out throughout the game. Much like in Duke Nukem 3D where Duke would have a snide comment if something happens. Uh, which is kind of amusing and brings a little more levity to the game. Same thing in Ion Maiden. Now I do want to cover one little quirk with the game. When you go ahead and start up the game, you have two options. You could use the old school software renderer, or you can use OpenGL. Sounds like most of us would choose OpenGL. It just makes sense. Why not use hardware acceleration? Well, there's a bit of an issue in this particular game. With OpenGL, there is major frame pacing issues. It's gotten better since the latest update, 
but you can definitely see it and you can feel it in the game that it's not as fluid as it should be. It definitely has a few kinks to be worked out. Now, running the game in the software renderer, you can do it on most modern CPUs. I'm just using the i5-3570 I used in the budget build a couple months ago, and it worked just fine. I did have to turn it down to 1366 by 768 to get the higher refresh, but it was able to handle 1080p60 just fine. Now, Ion Maiden is still in early access, but for $19.99, this is a package that I feel is worth it, honestly. I very rarely feel that games today are actually worth their asking price. But 3D Realms has really been able to encompass what made 90s games so great and actually make a new franchise using those old principles. This is something many companies have tried to do and many companies have failed. 3D Realms is so far, like I said, we're not there yet. The game's not done. But if they just continue doing what they're doing, I think that this game's going to be a major success. Let me know what you guys think. I haven't really done too many game reviews. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Are you interested in this kind of game? Do you like these throwback style games that we're starting to see? Games that will run very well on a Raven Ridge APU or pretty much any basic PC out there. You could probably get away with Intel graphics on something like this. I think that that's great because you don't need high-end hardware and you can still play probably one of the best games in 2018, in my opinion. So I think that that's a good thing. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And I will catch you guys in the next video.